Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Kidney Transplant Introduction Please write down any questions you may have and discuss with your transplant team. Kidney transplantation is a procedure that places a healthy kidney from another person into your body. The new kidney takes over the work of filtering your blood when your own kidneys don't work properly. Doctors have been performing successful kidney transplants since 1954. The decision whether to have a kidney transplant is yours. This tutorial will help you understand what the kidneys do, how kidney failure is treated, the advantages and risks of transplant, and what to expect from transplant evaluation, surgery, and recovery. Kidney failure. Your kidneys are located in the middle to lower back on both sides of the spine. The kidneys control the amount of fluid we keep in our bodies and make urine by filtering harmful chemicals called toxins out of the blood. The kidneys help to keep necessary chemical substances in the blood, such as salt, proteins, and sugars. The kidneys also help to keep our blood pressure regular. This is why many kidney diseases result in high blood pressure. Damage to only one kidney is not usually a major problem since the other kidney can take over. However, if both kidneys become damaged, a person will die within a few days if they do not get dialysis to remove the toxins from the body. ESRD, short for end-stage renal disease, develops when both kidneys are not able to function. This can happen gradually or all at once. The following are some causes of ESRD. Diabetes, hypertension, lupus, repeated kidney infections, kidney stones, kidney cysts, infection in the blood called sepsis, constant use of painkillers, alcohol, or other medications. Dialysis or transplant. Patients whose kidneys fail can choose to go on dialysis or get a kidney transplant. Dialysis is a process that replaces the functions of the kidneys and removes toxins from a person's body. Dialysis is a life-saving treatment for patients with kidney disease. However, dialysis can only do 10 to 15 percent of the work of a functioning kidney. Healthy kidneys filter the blood 24 hours a day, but dialysis does not. Someone with one working kidney has 50 to 85 percent of normal kidney function. There are some advantages to getting a transplant. Patients who have a transplant generally live longer than patients who stay on dialysis. This is because dialysis is hard on a person's body and can cause other medical problems. Many patients also say that transplant improved the quality of their lives. They say they have more time since they don't have to undergo dialysis, feel better and have more energy, can go to work and travel more easily. Kidney transplants are very successful. On average, nearly 95% of kidney transplants are working at one year. Transplants generally last for 10 to 20 years. Kidney transplant costs are generally covered by Medicare and or the recipient's private insurance. The recipient might have to take vacation time from work or pay for childcare, gas, meals, parking, or hotel costs. Patients may have to pay for some of the costs of the transplant medication. Every patient will talk to a transplant social worker and a transplant financial coordinator to learn which transplant costs are covered by their insurance. It is important to remember that transplantation is a treatment, not a cure. Patients will still have regular doctor's appointments and take medication to prevent kidney rejection. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute. www.patient-education.com Over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. 
living or deceased donation. There are two sources of kidneys for transplant. Kidneys from a healthy living person, like a family member or friend who offers to donate, a living donor. Kidneys from a person who has died, a deceased donor. There are several advantages to getting a living donor transplant. 1. Living donor transplants last longer than deceased donor transplants because a living donor kidney is removed from a healthy donor in the operating room and transplanted right away. Living donor transplants generally last for 15 to 20 years and deceased donor transplants last for 10 to 15 years. 2. People who receive a kidney from a family member or friend don't have to wait for a kidney from someone who has died. Living donors do not have to be blood-related, and living donor transplants can usually happen quickly. 3. A living donor transplant can be scheduled at a convenient time and when the recipient is the healthiest. 4. Living donation is a safe procedure. Following surgery, living kidney donors can live normal, healthy lives. If you are a good candidate for a transplant but don't have a family member or friend who can donate a kidney, you'll be put on a national waiting list to wait for a kidney from someone who has just died. Your healthcare team may refer to this type of kidney as a deceased or cadaveric kidney. There are two different listing statuses for kidney transplant, active and inactive. Active status means you are suitable for transplant surgery and are matched with deceased donors of the same blood type. Inactive status means an issue has been identified which makes you temporarily not suitable for transplant. While inactive, you continue to build waiting time but are not matched with deceased donors until your status changes to active. A nonprofit organization called the United Network for Organ Sharing, UNOS, manages the waiting list for deceased donor kidneys. Hospitals across the country put the medical information of patients who need kidneys into a national electronic waiting list system. You can be listed on more than one transplant center waiting list at the same time. This is called multi-listing. Your transplant center will explain this to you during your evaluation. When a donated organ becomes available, the UNOS computer ranks patients using a point system to ensure fairness. Patients get points based on factors such as how closely they match the donated kidney and how long they have been on dialysis. UNOS tries to match patients who are expected to live the longest with kidneys that are expected to last the longest. Kidneys with a shorter expected lifespan are given to patients with a shorter expected lifespan. To match deceased kidney donors with people on the waiting list, UNOS uses two ranking systems. One. The Kidney Donor Profile Index, KDPI. This number tells you how long the kidney is expected to last. 2. The Estimated Post-Transplant Survival Score, EPTS. This number tells you how long the patient receiving a kidney is expected to live. The KDPI and EPTS are on a scale of 0 to 100. The lower the KDPI, the longer the kidney is likely to last. The lower the EPTS, the longer the kidney recipient is likely to live. When a donated kidney becomes available, UNOS notifies the transplant center with the matching kidney patient. This potential recipient will be contacted by the transplant center to discuss the next step in the transplant admission process. Not enough deceased donor kidneys are donated for all the patients who need one. Patients wait two to six years on average for a kidney. Sometimes, a matching kidney is never found. Transplant Evaluation and Surgery Many professional staff are part of the transplant team. They will work with you to make your transplant as successful as possible. You will meet a surgeon, a nephrologist, kidney doctor, a transplant nurse coordinator, a transplant social worker, and other members of the transplant team during your evaluation. If you want to get either type of transplant, the first step is to contact a transplant center to begin transplant evaluation. Evaluation requires completing many medical tests. Not all people qualify to be kidney recipients. A recipient will complete a medical evaluation to determine their suitability for transplant. 
please check with your transplant center to review their evaluation and acceptance criteria. Evaluation involves having blood and urine tests, x-rays, and heart and lung function tests to determine whether your body is strong enough to undergo surgery and accept an available kidney. Smoking, vaping, and using smokeless tobacco increase your risk of surgical complications. Obesity and too much extra belly weight also make surgery riskier. Discuss with your transplant team whether these factors may be a barrier to a successful transplant. To prevent delays during the evaluation period, you need a recent and updated medical evaluation. Factors that could delay or prevent transplantation include active cancer, heart and blood vessels problems, dental problems, failure of another organ, insurance changes, being unable to follow your doctor's lifestyle requirements after surgery. A multidisciplinary patient selection committee will review your evaluation results and decide about your suitability for transplant. The following three outcomes are possible. Approved for placement on waitlist or schedule for live donor surgery, further evaluation testing required, or decline for listing. Once a decision has been made about your suitability as a transplant candidate, you will be notified in writing by the transplant team. If you have a living donor, the operation will be scheduled in advance. If you are on a waiting list for a deceased donor kidney, please be ready to go to the hospital as soon as the kidney becomes available. Before transplant surgery, you'll be given a general anesthetic to make you sleep during the operation. The surgeon will make a small cut in your lower abdomen. The new kidney will be connected to your bladder. Generally, your own kidneys are left in place. If you have a living donor transplant, you and your donor will be operated on at the same time, usually side by side in different rooms. During the two surgeries, the donor surgeon makes a small cut in the donor's belly to remove the kidney. The donor kidney is given to the recipient's surgical team who connects the kidney into the recipient's body. Some centers utilize a laparoscopic procedure which can reduce the recovery time for living donors. Patients interested in a laparoscopic procedure should ask their physician about the option as it may not be appropriate for all donor candidates. Most transplanted kidneys begin working right away while the recipient is still on the operating table. Sometimes the new kidney does not work right away. This is called delayed graft function. It happens because the kidney needs to recover from the time it's spent outside the body. Delayed graft function is more common with a deceased donor kidney. A recipient who has delayed graft function will go on dialysis until the kidney starts working. If the transplant is not successful, the recipient may return to dialysis. He or she may also be evaluated for another transplant. Transplant risks and complications Kidney transplantation is a relatively safe procedure. There are, however, possible risks and complications associated with any surgery. Even though they are unlikely, you need to know about them before you decide to have a transplant. The surgical and anesthesia team will evaluate and explain your risks for surgery. These risks include infection that may require long-term antibiotics and possibly surgery, bleeding either during or after the operation. This may necessitate a blood transfusion or another operation. Pneumonia blood clots which can occur in the legs due to inactivity after surgery. Death is extremely unlikely but is possible. Following surgery, your transplant team will monitor your daily progress and minimize the potential risk associated with surgery. After surgery As with any major surgery, you'll probably feel sore and groggy when you wake up. However, many transplant recipients report feeling much better immediately after surgery since the working kidney starts removing extra water and toxins from their bodies right away. Most recipients spend several days in the hospital following the operation. Your transplant team will tell you when you can drive again and return to your normal activities. After the transplant, you will have regular doctor visits to check your new kidney function and blood pressure. 
Your body's immune system is designed to keep you healthy by sensing foreign invaders, such as bacteria, and attacking them. So your immune system will sense that your new kidney is foreign. You will take medicine to keep your body's immune system from attacking and rejecting your new kidney. There are potential side effects to all medications. You will be taught about these side effects before you leave the hospital. Not all patients have these problems, but it is important that you understand which side effects may happen. Pregnancy is possible after a kidney transplant, but there can be risks. For example, some medications taken to prevent organ rejection can increase your risk of birth defects and miscarriage. If you would like to become pregnant, talk with your healthcare team. Miscarriage happens when an embryo or fetus dies during the first 20 weeks of pregnancy. To ensure that you have a successful transplant, you will need to follow the directions of your transplant team, take all medications as prescribed, and keep regularly scheduled clinic appointments with your transplant team. Fever, soreness around the new kidney, or a change in the amount of urine you make may be a sign of infection or rejection and should be reported to your transplant team. If found early, organ rejection and infection can often be treated successfully. Once you have fully recovered, after your transplant surgery you will have more energy, flexibility, increased activity level, and ability to return to work. You will have fewer diet restrictions and be encouraged to drink as much fluid as you want. Transplanted kidneys generally work for 10 to 20 years. However, even if you do everything you're supposed to do, your body may still reject the new kidney at some point. Some people may need more than one transplant in their lifetime. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Conclusion Kidneys filter harmful substances out of the body. Patients whose kidneys fail can go on dialysis or get kidney transplants from living or deceased donors. Kidney transplantation is a very successful operation, with transplants lasting 10 to 20 years on average. Compared to staying on dialysis, most patients who get kidney transplants live longer and have more freedom and energy. If you are interested in getting a kidney transplant, speak to your health professionals and contact a transplant center to begin the evaluation process. www.unos.org Thank you for using Explain.